this um, particular webinar is occasioned by a new partnership between CRL and Law Libraries Microform Consortium. Uh, CRL and LLMC, or Law Libraries Microform Consortium, are both organizations dedicated to the long-term um, preservation and accessibility of primary source materials. We're um, glad to see the interest in today's webinars. There are over 50 people signed on, so there will be a lot of, uh, we hope there will be a lot of, uh, a lot of dialogue. These, um, the libraries represented range from four-year colleges to major research universities, both the U.S. and Canadian institutions. But they also include the independent research libraries like the uh, National Humanities Center and the New York Public Library and a number of law libraries as well as academic research libraries. So I, uh, I want to thank those who, when they registered, expressed their interests in um, this area. The, um, the interests range from um, interest, the, these interests, expressing these interests in your registration to help CRL, um, helps guide CRL collecting and services and helps us get a clear sense of your interest. Interests expressed were uh, included comparative judicial politics in Southeast Asia, government mater materials about East Asia, um, what uh, kind of materials are in the LLMC digital database versus LexisNexis academic or congressional, uh, human rights and social justice, as well as colonial government documents in Africa. So these, um, we appreciate your, uh, those that, um, that did give us some information about their interest in their registration. That, that helps us a lot. We also, we're happy to have a lot of collection, a lot of questions posed during, uh, by people registering. And those will be addressed either in the course of the presentations or in the question and answer sessions. So there will be a survey, an online survey for, about the webinar afterwards that uh, you'll hear more about later on. Um, and I want to thank you and your institutions for supporting CRL. Your support makes possible the survival of important evidence and documentation for research in and learning in the humanities and social sciences. So the, um, <clears throat> I want to introduce Virginia Kerr, who is our digital program manager. Thanks, Bernie. Good afternoon. Before we begin, I want to just go over a few housekeeping rules. If you have any technical difficulties during the presentation with either the audio or the video, please let us know through the online chat or call CRL at 800-621 6044. That's 800-621-6044. Please note that your phone has been muted on entry. We, we do this to eliminate any background noise that could come through the open phone lines. We ask that you leave your phones muted during the presentation. If you have a question during the presentation, please feel free to send it on the chat line and we'll address it at a point we can uh, determine during the presentation. There will be a Q&A period, a discussion period at the end, at which time you'll be able to unmute your phones. CRL provides webinars for members throughout the year. Twice a year, we offer introductions to our collections and services, while other webinars focus on particular subjects or genres of, collect of collection material, such as China, Africa, or dissertations, engaging members in discussion on the challenges of collecting in those areas and featuring significant items from CRL's collections. This webinar has a somewhat different focus, being an introductory orientation to one particular new CRL resource the LLMC Digital Collection from the Law Library Microform Consortium. CRL's recently announced partnership with LLMC, as Bernie mentioned, has made this resource available to all CRL libraries. And just going over the agenda for uh, this hour's webinar, we'll be giving, uh, I'll be giving background on the institution's goals and uh, the goals of the partnership. Uh, we'll have Kathleen Richmond from LLMC talking about the history and activities of the institution. And then we'll talk about the database, um, its potential uses, and um, terms of access to the database. I'd like to uh, just remind you of um, uh, the overall uh, overarching goals of CRL. We're a uh, member-governed consortium of 250 institutions of higher learning, uh, supporting advanced research and teaching in the humanities, so sciences, and social sciences. 
we uh, our our primary concern, as Bernie mentions, is the uh, ensuring the availability of primary sources through their preservation and acquisition. And we do this through our uh, shared collection of uh, five million items, books, journals, archives, documents, and newspapers. And increasingly, we are emphasizing the role of the communities of interest within CRL in, um, in uh, identifying priorities for um, material to be and, and sharing information about critical and at-risk source materials. The partnership with LLMC will allow us to leverage the strength of common interests between the two organizations, both being committed to preserving important research materials for the future. CRL members will benefit from this partnership several ways, including gaining access to LLMC Digital at a very favorable rate, and also the opportunity to influence the future growth and sustainability of the digital collection. I'll be discussing terms of access to the collection and future selection plans in more detail after giving an overview of the scope of the collection and its potential uses in various disciplines. But first of all, I'd like to introduce Kathleen Richman, Executive Director of LLMC, who will be telling you more about the history, goals, and activities of the organization. Uh, I'd like to note that um, also uh, online is uh, Jerry DuPont of LLMC, and Jerry, uh, I know, will be listening uh, keenly to this presentation and also will be available to uh, answer questions, uh, participate in the discussion at the end. So Kathleen, uh, if you would like to uh, to join us at this point. Great. Thank you, Virginia. Um, and especially on behalf of LLMC, I really want to um, thank Bernie, his management team, uh, your board, and all of you. Uh, we are quite thrilled to be working with Center for Research Libraries in uh, pursuing this mission of making this content available uh, to all of our organizations. So uh, we're thrilled about this partnership and I'm happy to be uh, part of this presentation today. Next slide. I think I'm covering uh, history of the organization, its mission, members, and the all-important content. So the organization's been around for 34 years. It was founded by Jerry DuPont uh, out of Hawaii at that time um, the acting uh, dean of the law school and the director of their law library, and he had a vision. And uh, going forward, it, it evolved to be a considerable online resource as well as preservation uh, service. Um, we've got, uh, this has uh, been established as a 501c3 nonprofit organization. It's a collaboration, as we talked about, uh, especially of law libraries, and it is self-governing and independent. It consists of governance consists of nine board of directors who are elected by and comprised of our membership. Uh, they serve uh, terms, and they're staggered terms, and there is an election every year during our members meeting at the annual association of law libraries meeting. In addition, there are 18 advisory council positions, and these people are also elected by the members and serve um, staggered terms. And the election, again, is at the same meeting. Uh, the advisory council uh, supports the board in special projects and initiatives, and they consist of people who uh, have a front interest in, at some point, serving on the board as well as former board members. The twin goals of the organization, its mission, is to preserve legal titles and governance-related public documents worldwide. So all materials, legal and government-related worldwide, which are not protected by copyright, and making this valuable content accessible and searchable. When the organization was started in 1976, the access was, um, and distribution was by fiche, microfiche, but as of 2003, our focus is digital while we still provide microfiche. Next slide. Thank you. 
Our members, as Virginia and Bertie touched on, uh, we have over 261 organizations currently active members. That's prior to our collaboration with um, CRL. Uh, we have heavy penetration in North America law schools, 100% coverage of the U.S. Federal Court libraries, including the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, Judy Gassel, the um, director at the U.S. Supreme Court library, was currently a board member and is on the advisory council and, in fact, the uh, U.S. Jury Committee, which we'll touch on later. Uh, and also, we have several law firms academic law libraries and international libraries and we look to those areas for future growth. These members um, are heaviest users uh, driven by the kinds of research they're doing at the time. So, you know, some of our most um, heavy users in the past six months include uh, likely candidates such as Yale and Harvard, but also University of South Carolina, State University of New York, Buffalo. Creighton University, the Canadian Department of Justice in Ontario, Pennsylvania State, York University in Toronto. So any of your organizations, depending on the type of research you're doing, will find value in our service. Next slide, please. As we suggested, you know, we're, we're about um, scanning, digitizing, and preserving legal and government related content. And at present, we, um, our LLMC digital online service, which you all have access to, includes 2,400 titles. Um, that's over 53,000 volumes and over 27.5 million images. We average in our production about 100 new titles a month, and we make those um, available on our website, www.llmc.com. We list them by month uh, if you want to reference what, what is new. Um, and, you know, the number of titles, the number of volumes will vary month to month depending on uh, how many volumes there are in a, in a title and the difficulty of the scanning for that set, you know, whether we can use high-speed scanning as a process or whether we need to use step and repeat. Um, there, we've identified over 2 million volumes worldwide of legal-related content that's not copyrighted. So certainly the corpus of what we can undertake is significant. And, and, and of course, we're committed to doing so. How do we prioritize that content that is in our queue? Um, some of the things we take into consideration is certainly the demand of our members. Uh, we want to be very responsive to our membership's needs. So if um, they have access to certain content, but it's really just the most current content and not um, the substantive archive that they would like to have access to. Uh, then we build out um, the archival uh, core of uh, primary legal content for uh, U.S., Canada, et cetera. Um, we look at the complexity of the content. Some um, commercial vendors will prioritize content that's, you know, accessible digitally or easy to do. Uh, we look at what's important to our members. So uh, we're currently embarked on uh, California Records and Briefs with the LA Law Library, and there are lots of challenges in that content. It's 77,000 plus volumes of content, five square miles of shelf space that they're trying to free up. Um, and the content includes several fold-out pages, which, of course, are non-standard size and need step-and-repeat scanning. So, but if it's important to our members as a priority project, we will undertake it. The other value we, that um, the mar members feed back to us is it may be available on another service but may be very costly. And frankly, that's what drove the organization from the beginning, is the ability to provide this content at very reasonable terms um, and then very high quality at the same time. Uh, the uniqueness and rarity of the content is also a driver of ours because we are in the mode of preservation and some content may not be around in five to ten years, unfortunately, in its print form. So uh, for the, the especially unique and rare content, while most of our production is done in our facility in 
um, Hawaii, the, we do have an extern scanner program where we place scanners strategically at rare book collection sites because that content arguably shouldn't be shipped in order to be um, digitized. Uh, sites in, uh, where we currently have um, relationships like that include the Library of Congress, L.A. Law Library, St. Louis University, George Washington University, and the University of Hawaii. And also, one of the things that will drive our content prioritization going forward is certainly the Global Resources Law Steering Committee joined, uh, uh, created as part of this partnership with CRL, and it's a joint committee, and Virginia will touch on that in greater detail. Next slide, please. As a consortium of libraries, um, we are committed to the quality as well as the preservation and access to the valuable legal and government information that's available. As part of that, we have extensive quality assurance program in place at the page level. And at any stage of our production, we can redo and or replace a page. And that will be important to you because we make the best possible copy of the document that we have to work with. But if down the road we find um, a page of, or a volume available that is in better condition, we can replace what we've done with something even better. So, so all the time we're committed to investing our resources and our technology in providing you with the very best um, uh, quality content. All of our titles, um, once they're available on LLMC Digital, are cataloged to the highest OCLC standards. Our cataloging is done out of the St. Louis uh, Law Library overseen by Richard Amelon, who's Associate Director of St. Louis Law Library, and I am pleased to say is our chairperson of the Board of Directors. And he oversees the catalogers, and um, we have excellent uh, bibliographic metadata as a result of their efforts. We also preserve in multiple formats. We know we need to do this because over time we have seen technology evolve and we have seen that the, our, our members expect access to content in different forms. So our digital images, of course, are available on, and backed up on servers in different sites. In addition, uh, from the dim, digital images, we write um, uh, the content to archival quality silver highlight, highlight film. Uh, we continue then to create a master fiche, and we continue to offer fiche as part of our services to members. And the original paper blocks are archivally shrink-wrapped and sent to salt mines in Kansas where they are stored in ideal conditions 600 feet below ground. I point out the picture to you on this slide. Uh, Jerry DuPont is um, in the second row to the right, and th these are the staff in Hawaii that work on things like uh, scanning and quality assurance, and they're very dedicated people. Next slide, please. I couldn't help but take a chance to um, provide you with some examples of the power of the collaboration among these library members. For example, uh, our members said at one point that they were uh, particularly interested in uh, coverage for Iraq. We currently in our Iraqi collection have 28 titles available to you, including the Iraq Official Gazette. In order to provide a comprehensive um, database of the Iraq Official Gazette, we had to look to um, this uh, title it, from four different contributing libraries, Columbia, Harvard, Library of Congress, and LA Law Library. Literally by page, we um, were able to extract and pull together the most comprehensive source worldwide for this, um, for this title. No one could help but be moved by the hurricane um, in Haiti. And uh, we, in particular, asked ourselves, what can we do? And of course, we're un uniquely positioned to respond in, in, in preserving and making available uh, the legal and government-related content to this nation and to all of our members. So we embarked on the Haiti Project. The details of this project are available 
on our website, www.llmc.com, under the tab Haiti Project. Um, it, there's a spreadsheet that has um, all the titles, the libraries contributing, et cetera. Um, this project from day one was discussed with Bernie and has the full support of this partnership with CRL. Uh, we've identified to date over 660 unique titles that comprise our Haiti collection. 55% of those um, titles are already being scanned and in process. Eight titles are currently available online to you in LLMC Digital. Um, the uh, Library of Congress and Columbia are donating their entire public domain collections for their Haiti legal collection, including the official gazette. Uh, the extended library partners are, are many. Uh, I've named just a few, but more are listed on the tab under Haiti Project on our website. All of this content is going to be donated back to the people of Haiti for free access as a result of this effort. And um, as part of this uh, project, uh, Jerry and Richard Amelung will be creating an English and French bibliography of Haitian law, which will be published directly. One of the very popular site uh, collections on our LONC digital service is the Native American collection. Mm -hmm. At present, there are over 500 charters and constitutions, which we got from uh, in collaboration with the Library of Congress. I've just named a few uh, alphabetically. Uh, you can pick your favorite tribe. Um, but we have over 1,200 additional titles in, pro in process. And I understand um, that's a collection that will be of interest to several of you as well. In addition, as we talked about prioritization of content, we, we not only look at some of this uni these unique projects, but of course our substantive primary law. And um, we build out, um, in addition to federal and, and state, when we take on 50 uh, state projects, we look to 50 state builds. Uh, we've recently completed our state um, court reports build, which is the most substantive collection available historically for uh, state court reports. And um, we're well along the way with our 50 state session law builds. Um, I've listed, just so you know, a couple of things when we take on these projects, what we consider. For the California session laws, for example, we worked with the Legislative Council Bureau in Sacramento. They literally vetted this collection by page. And we start with the first session laws in 1849, and we bring it to current. With Hawaii, because of our you know, unique relationship with the University of Hawaii and the Hawaii State Archives, we go back to 1843, which is the beginning of the monarchy legislature. Uh, I know some of you have expressed interest um, in the feedback prior to this session for state legislative journals, and of course we'd be looking to that as well as part of future bills. Thank you so much, and Kathleen. Thank you, Virginia. Now we're going to uh, take a look at LLMC Digital. Uh, I've got the uh, URL there for you, and we do have links from various spots on the uh, CRL site. Uh, in this presentation, I'm just going to be showing screen grabs. As Kathleen has noted, currently the digital collection comprises over 27 million pages and over 2,400 titles. It's projected to grow at a rate of around 5 million pages per year. The contents are arranged by jurisdictions, including U.S. federal and state, as well as some multi-jurisdiction subject categories, including British Empire Studies, Comparative Law, Military Law, and Native American materials. The browse tree in the left-hand column is an important guide to the extent of contents. And here you see it broken out to show uh, a range of documents uh, of issued uh, through California. Full text searching can be conducted across the entire collection, various jurisdiction subsets, or individual titles or series. The documents are presented in PDF format with page images and hidden OCR. 
An appealing advantage of this format is that downloaded sections of the documents, up to 100 pages for each downloaded PDF, retain text search capability. Note that students or researchers not having expertise with legal literature may experience some initial confusion in using the interface. Searching by legal citations or browsing titles by standard citation format may not be productive for those unaccustomed to the abbreviations in the Harvard Blue Book. Likewise, there are some particularities of the interface and site navigation which will require some familiarization. For instance, the Browse List incorporates lists to a full annotated listing of all titles which LLMC has preserved in microform format as well as the digitized titles. To continue searching or browsing the digital collection, the user must re-enter from the home page of the site. Nevertheless, through full text searches and browsing, researchers pursuing topics in a variety of disciplines outside of professional legal training will find a rich trove of documents in LLMC Digital. The trend toward using published laws, treaties, statutes, and court records as primary source research materials in many fields is an important factor driving CRL's interest in LLMC. We ask members of CRL's IRWIG committee, who represent the interests of undergraduate educators in uses of primary source materials, to consider the potential multidisciplinary uses of LLMC content at their institutions. I'm particularly indebted to Heather Tompkins and her colleagues at Carleton College. They identified many contexts, including senior theses or advanced seminars in international relations, global environmental policy, and history of various international institutions. Oh, and going back, I'm sorry, I want to go back to that uh, previous slide for a minute. Um, here I've um, pulled out to focus on the, um, the original uh, criminal code from uh, the Soviet Republic um, in an English translation published in 1924. And um, you'll see here a decree um, indicating the uh, intentions of, these, of this code um, to support um, the interests of the state and, um, and defend against um, those who, who might uh, uh, be uh, contrary to the those interests. Just one document that I happen to uh, pull out. Thanks. Now on the U.S. national front, research areas of current interest which are supported in LLMC can include labor, labor politics, voting rights, poverty, constitutional law, war policies, immigration, and historic land use. Here I'm showing a couple of documents uh, related to the wartime relocation of Americans of Japanese descent, including the Attorney General's Report of 1944, in which the preface indicated that it was typewritten instead of printed for reasons of economy. Uh, and by 1944, I don't know if you can actually read this in this um, excerpt, but um, they're questioning the um, ongoing effectiveness of maintaining um, interned uh, Japanese Americans. And then you also see from 1950 a court case regarding a property claim settlement um, from George Kawaguchi who uh, is claiming the cost of an automobile that was um, impounded. So um, court records included in LLMC can also, as you can imagine, provide extensive sources for genealogical research. Historical government documents, as Kathleen has noted, are in some cases represented more fully here than in other sites. For instance, historical copies of the U.S. Congressional Record are found in American memory from the Library of Congress up to 1875, and recent years are found in the database Thomas, but LLMC can help to round out coverage for the in-between years, and I'm showing you here a page from Congressional Record from, um, I believe it's 1876, I can't read it from this position. Uh, note that um, the uh, holdings for all LLMC uh, digital uh, contents are discoverable through MARC records for each title in OCLC. A number of current LLMC digital subscribers purchase records from OCLC to integrate in their local holdings. CRL is very interested in exploring with our members optimal methods for supporting local discovery at your own institution. Since opening up LLMC 
digital access to all CRL members, we've had a number of questions about the terms of access. During this initial year, LLMC Digital is available freely on a trial basis for those libraries not previously subscribing through their law libraries. CRL will then propose favorable terms of continued access to help support this endeavor. Taking into we want to take into consideration a plan which would also benefit those libraries already subscribing. Current LLMC subscriptions are scaled according to the anticipated level of total usage. I've noted that we expect the guidance on selection of new subject areas and titles will be an important benefit of CRL's partnership with LLMC, providing an opportunity to influence the future growth and sustainability of the digital collection. Kathleen has mentioned that a joint steering committee representing LLMC and CRL constituent libraries has been appointed, uh, and the first meeting of this joint steering committee is coming up in the first week of October. These are the committee members at this point, and I do encourage you to uh, contact those that you're familiar with um, to express your interest in particular uh, areas of uh, prioritization for future growth. Uh, and we do, um, uh, we, we are aware uh, that there are a variety of areas um, so that we want to uh, uh, consider all uh, areas of interest. The committee will guide identification of collections to be digitized, drawing from CRL holdings as well as those of other important repositories. We anticipate that the committee will advocate expanding CRL, uh, expanding, I'm sorry, LLMC digital collections in areas of research of interest to CRL members, especially regional and international studies. Uh, Kathleen has already mentioned several current LLMC projects demonstrating the potential for expanding the diversity of materials in the collection, including the plans underway to expand Native American content scanning from the Library of Congress, and most recently in response to the earthquake disaster in Haiti, a collaborative effort to build a digital corpus of Haitian law materials. The most important point to note about building LLMC digital collections is that materials are identified and prioritized in response to member interest, which dovetails perfectly with the CRL model for collection building. As a Right, and um, Bernie is pointing out to me that uh, we had a comment from uh, Kathleen uh, to be sure and, and uh, note that um, the um, the indigenous materials that will be um, that are being identified for inclusion in LLMC uh, include um, materials from indigenous groups in Canada as well as the um, uh, uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, indigenous groups. As a way to jumpstart the flow of materials digitized with CRL support, we've pinpointed certain materials at CRL for digitization, including over 2,000 volumes of Canadian legislative journals and selected early 20th century European dissertations on various legal issues, especially questions of international jurisdiction. LLMC also plans to fast-track digitization of items relating to um, colonial-era Africa, which have been identified in the bibliography Common Law Abroad. Uh, they've identified a source, um, they've identified several repository sources, including the LA uh, Law Library, which happens to have strong holdings uh, in this area. Preservation of retrospective volumes is an important goal which CRL shares with LLMC, and all new materials scanned under the guidance of the Joint Committee will undergo the rigorous LLMC provisions for preservation. CRL also expect, expects to explore with LLMC the range of optimal solutions for archiving the digital output. I'd like to take the opportunity to mention briefly how the partnership with LLMC can enhance new initiatives now underway at CRL. Um, these uh, initiatives we are referring to um, broadly as the Collections Forum. We'd like to consider offering specialized webinars investigating issues faced in building collections on aspects of law intersecting with other research issues of interest. 
And we hope that a new series of reviews of digital resources to be mounted on CRL's website will include comparative reviews of major collections of legal materials, including Hein Online, LexisNexis, and LLMC Digital. We're looking uh, to the CRL membership for suggestions on topics for specialized webinars and comparative analyses. And in fact, uh, as Bernie mentioned, several of you registering for this webinar uh, have, in the course of indicating your interest, um, several mentioned hearing more comparisons of various resources available, uh, digital resources in law documents. Um, by the way, what I'm showing here is a screen grab from an early prototype of the types of reviews that we're considering uh, inc including. And um, as I said, we, could, we hope to extend this to reviews of online legal material. Um, we have run through our presentation material, so at this time I would like to uh, invite your questions and comments on potential uses of LLMC Digital and CRL libraries. Um, just as a reminder, you can send in your questions uh, through the chat uh, function, or you can individually um, hit star six on your phones to unmute your phones and give us your questions directly. And I'd also like to um, invite Kathleen and also Jerry DuPont if there are any additional points that you would uh, like to uh, emphasize at, at this point uh, uh, from this very um, uh, brief uh, overview of the LLMC digital uh, content. Uh, please do feel free to, to join in. Kathleen had, had uh, 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 made note of the indigenous materials uh, from Canada that will be included uh, as well as those from from US we had uh, various questions um, from the registrants um, in the uh, signing up for the the uh, the seminar um, and we have a question here about um, comparing uh, LLMC Digital with Hein Online and LexisNexis. What I was talking about is a comparison review. Um, that is, that's the kind of um, information that CRL seeks to um, gain insights from our members uh, about um, your uses of this material, um, your perspectives on what uh, what effectiveness um, the material is having for you locally, and we, we hope to provide um, a rigorous um, comparison of the, um, the contents, the terms, uh, the, the, um, the pros and cons of the various uh, resources. So that, that's uh, what I was referring, for, referring to in that case, uh, is proposing um, that we have comparative reviews, which um, would involve input from uh, CRL and LLMC uh, uh, members, uh, and we would uh, draw those up and provide those uh, on our website. We had uh, uh, notes from registrants uh, um, indicating interest in, in showing um, uh, the variety of disciplines where LLMC digital content could be used, um, there was a question about what would we um, what would we say would be the value in the humanities um, as well as in the social sciences. Um, now, I, uh, I, I'm not sure if I could draw on my own background, uh, my art history background, um, but I would, I would venture to say certainly uh, in the areas of, of literature, of um, cultural history, uh, there, I, I've pointed out um, the actual uh, genealogical research that can be done. I think looking at conditions of um, social conditions at the time can uh, certainly that seems to be a trend in um, various disciplines today to look at contextual information uh, in terms of having background on um, the genesis of, uh, of certain uh, literary uh, uh, themes uh, at various times. So I, um, and we, uh, I, I would be very interested in seeing other uh, comments or, um, or break in with, with your own uh, comments through uh, the phone um, for potential that you see uh, for uh, humanities-related research. 
We have a um, we have a question: Is LLMC digital content discoverable and available through the CRL catalog? And we are most definitely looking at this um, uh, at what the uh, options would be. Um, at this point, we we do know that all we we've had discussions with LLMC about this. Um, there are about 2,400 titles with obviously uh, many more volumes um, in LLMC at this point. Um, what CRL's role would be in terms of facilitating discovery um, uh, of this material and pointing to it from CRL's uh, um, uh, catalog, we would like to look at and we'd like to hear from you uh, what you would find uh, to be useful. Can I talk? Then? Yes, you can talk. Yeah. Uh, is the file format going to be PDF or will it be any text file? The, the file format is PDF with um, hidden OCR text. Um, uh, perhaps, uh, Jerry, I don't know if you'd like to chime in at this point about um, uh, considerations of future uh, format. I, I'm, you can cut and paste the text um, from these PDFs, but in terms of viewing the actual uh, OCR text, I'm not sure about the capabilities on that. Um, do we have... You, yes, um, I think I think the question. Hi, he, Kathleen, I, um, yeah, you, you, uh, I did want to comment a couple things about the formatting of the data. It is um, leveraged in the most advanced Adobe Acrobat, uh, so you can, as Virginia suggested, you can cut paste, um, you can save searches and come back to those searches. I mean, there's a, a lot of functionality there. Um, if you need the original text, um, you can access the, the raw text image as well, um, but, but we have as a default version the, um, the PDF image as, as an, an enhanced um, image. Mm -hmm. If that answers your question. Um. A couple, did that cover your question at this point? Okay. Uh, we have a question about uh, using the interface to print uh, more than one page at a time. And I've been playing around with it. I don't have it open right here, and I can get back to you if I'm incorrect about this. But um, there is a way to select on the um, uh, uh, in the, the presentation on the interface for the PDF, you, you select a number of pages and you can then uh, view, uh, download, and uh, I believe go ahead and print um, from that selection up to 100 pages of a, of a document. There, um, uh, we have several questions on the, um, the pricing the terms of access to LLMC Digital. And um, what I want to stress is that this is, um, this is a, a year in which we would really like uh, members to, um, to explore um, the uses, uh, those who are not currently subscribing to uh, LLMC. And uh, we will be having conversations both with um, the institutions um, that have not previously subscribed and, and those um, who currently get LLMC through their law libraries. And I think that um, Bernie, would you like to uh, say something at this point about uh, what we, how we expect to, to come up with this uh, uh, model for cost support? Sure. Yeah, this will be a, a this is going to be uh, worked out in discussions with the LMC board. The um, what we want to do is expand the accessibility of the collection. So we want to make it available to all CRL members. But we're recognizing that a number of larger institutions are already subscribing through to the database through their own law libraries. So we, um, we want to benefit them in the process of this. But what we don't want to do is, is steal subscribers from LLMC, from Law Libraries Microform Consortium. So we'll be working out an arrangement with the um, Law Library Microform Consortium that we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about in about six months. Um, I, you know, I, I, I wish I could say more about this at this point, but the, the key things is that the, we expect all, all Sierra libraries to be better off as a result of this in terms of 
the amount of uh, collection material they have access to and the, the, um, the cost of that collections material. talk a little bit about digital ownership perpetual um, license the all the materials that are being digitized under the partnership are um, CRL has the rights to to host those files so those those files will be archived by CRL but we also um, there, there is a cost involved in that so we we would like we ideally like to have uh, LLMC as really a certified um, repository of digital legal content, and we'll we'll move towards that. There are other ways of of, of um, ensuring um, long term or or perpetual access to the digital content through third party repositories like Portico or Hathi Trust or those as well. Those will all be things that we'll be exploring with LMC in the in the course of the year. But the um, do know that the as part of our agreement that all of the digital uh, materials that are um, that are developed um, in the partnership with CRL will be that CRL will have uh, rights to perpetual use and access to those. And um, the material that's being scanned from from CRL, uh, as as I mentioned, we have. Uh, identified uh, material to get started on uh, our collaboration. Uh, we've identified material within CRL's collection. Um, we certainly will be looking to the steering committee to um, to prioritize in the future, but we expect at a rate of, of approximately uh, several thousand volumes per year just of CRL content um, to be, uh, we're already having some of that material um, sent to Hawaii for digitization. Um, I uh, wondered, uh, uh, Kathleen, could you, um, would you have anything further to say about access to the Haitian material? For one thing, you had mentioned that it will be um, accessible to Haiti. Um, also, we, we know that this is a collaborative effort among uh, a, a number of uh, institutions contributing this material and and perhaps this is a good time to point out that um, some institutions donate volume as I understand it and Kathleen perhaps you can uh, elaborate more on and how it's working in case of the Haitian project some institutions uh, donate volumes um, to be scanned and those volumes are archived as part of the preservation effort um, some institutions will loan materials for scanning particularly in the case of the Haiti the Haitian material um, where there are some uh, some of the items that uh, Jerry is seeking are um, uh, uh, original documents to the time of the Haitian uh, Revolution, and um, those are being sought as loan items from special collections. Uh, and uh, CRL is going to um, work with um, with LLMC to further identify uh, some of our member institutions that might be willing to loan uh, volumes to help round out this uh, important collection um, to to help contribute to its completeness. Um, Kathleen, do you have anything more to say about the, the uh, Haitian project and, and um, uh, what will happen with that uh, material in terms of access? Yes, thank you, Virginia. And also, I invite Jerry, if he's um, available, we had a technical difficulty. So uh, uh, if he's available to chime in, because he's certainly um, working out the logistics and the details. Uh, but we are close to... Um, securing a, a, an agreement with a group, uh, but the intention is absolutely to provide free access to the entire collection back to the people of Haiti. Um, what the best medium to do that is, uh, we're still working out the details. So I don't have a, a specific organization yet, uh, but there is a group um, that is uh, well positioned in in that part of the world to, to support Haiti that way. Um, and, and again, if it means, I mean, it's their directive if, if they want it, uh, certainly by web, uh, but if they also need it in CD, whatever their um, preference is, we'll, we'll make sure to support that. In terms of the way people provide content for this initiative or any other initiative, I'm glad you touched on that, Virginia. There's so many ways the content comes in. Over time, as libraries are being forced to divest their print, 
Um, we're getting more and more donations shipped to Hawaii directly at, that we can um, guillotine and high-speed scan. So that um, effort has grown as libraries are being forced to create more space um, uh, in their libraries. Uh, but we also have uh, so there are donations where um, the content is too fragile or, or uh, determined to be too fragile to ship. And of course, we have the scanning, extern scanner program I touched on. In addition, we have donations that are loaned. So if a library needs that copy, that title back, we, we can um, uh, step and repeat, scan it uh, with the highest degree of care, and then return the book. We, and, and we do that as well, if, if, um, if that's a preference of the library. Uh, so there are lots of arrangements that are possible with us. Uh, we are a consortia of members, and we are very flexible in terms of how we work with a library and its preferences for dealing with its, its um, content that it wants to contribute uh, to LLMC Digital. Also, uh, I think we were touching on Virginia, some of the content, some of the titles are available in microform versus print um, mic and microfilm. Uh, specifically and, and for the Haiti collection. And we will be digitizing that collection. There is a, a, a title uh, that is um, a French set from the University of Florida, and we're going to jointly work on that and digitize from the microfilm set as part of this um, effort. So there are lots of ways to work with the libraries um, as, as, as the, t the content d dictates. Um, and, and we can um, support lots of um, options. Thanks, Kathleen, for mentioning that. Um, so we will, uh, I just wanted to add, as Bernie Riley at CRL, that, that CRL will be posting a desiderata list for this collection as part of our effort to, to, to um, invite and recruit uh, collection of, of these kinds of materials from, or contribution of these kinds of materials from the um, CRL libraries. Thanks. I, I wanted to mention one other question about coverage, which came in through the um, uh, pre-registration. Um, someone had asked, um, "How does? Uh, what are the advantages of uh, go finding government uh, material through LLMC Digital uh, versus um, open access uh, government websites?" And um, I, I think it would be interesting to continue to explore um, uh, the relationship of this content to to other sources. That could be a topic for another review that we could provide um, comparison of LLMC Digital not only to um, other commercial sources but also to government uh, U.S. government uh, uh, contents. Um, but I had mentioned that uh, Heather Tompkins from Carleton, uh, in her brief review of the content, had noted a couple of spots where the um, the emphasis on historical um, retrospective coverage uh, was advantageous in LLMC Digital. The um, the presence of the congressional record material. Um, uh, filling in a gap between what American memory has and, and what Thomas has. I also wanted to... Um, Virginia? Yes. Mm -hmm. On that point, um, the other thing uh, that the consortia of libraries has, um, has committed to is uh, the preservation for access. So there's a sense that um, while the content may be available on various government sites today, uh, there's not a sense of confidence that it'll be, you know, supported going forward as as the economy impacts these government agents, uh, local mm -hmm. and, and federal government um, sites, et cetera. Um, the other thing is that it's all in one place. It's easier if you look to LOMC Digital than if you try to to identify, you know, where else it might be. So, so over time, we see some advantages. Um, and, but we're certainly not t saying, you know, others don't have their own advantages. Okay. Um, thanks, Kathleen, for, for, I think, and those are important points. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have a question from Nadine Hoffman, um, uh, getting back to some of the questions on the use of the database and I, uh, on, on specifics of how to use the database, how to search, how to display um, results, how to, to uh, uh, the definition of, of where the hidden OCR text reside, resides. And I did uh, want to point out that there is, um, 
uh, there is a, I think it's in PDF format, there is a help document on the site. Um, obviously one benefit of uh, getting uh, more members, more um, institutions looking at this resource is to point out um, areas where it would be valuable to provide uh, information on use of the site. So your questions to us, we will be conveying to uh, LLMC and look at, at uh, ways that uh, we can, that uh, LLMC can um, uh, uh, convey this information through the, the prompts on the interface and the uh, help information. Um, we will also have a description of LLMC Digital on our on CRL's site so uh, we can address some questions. Um, the help tab uh, on on the document uh, on the site, as uh, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, Kathleen has reminded me, um, does have um, it has screen grabs as well as descriptions of some of the functions, the uh, downloading, uh, and search, and browse functions. Uh, finally, and we're getting close to the end of the hour, uh, where we want to. Virginia, if I could just. Uh Come in for a second. This is Jerry oh, from, great. from Hawaii. Jerry just just rode in in his yeah, uh, outrigger from Hawaii. Thanks for joining you all late. We're having storms out here in the middle of the Pacific, and uh, I was just able to see the screen, but I've been listening for the last half hour, and so hello to everybody. Great. Did you want to make a comment about uh, uh, adding to the um, instructions on the site, uh, Jerry, or just oh, just no, a I general didn't hello? Want to say hi. Sorry. Great. Thank you so much. Um, uh, we, uh, Bernie just reminded me one other question. Uh, well, we had several questions about um, content, international content, which I think will help to um, uh, inform the steering committee as we move ahead. Um, there were questions about coverage of Sharia uh, law. Um, I'm not uh, aware of the, I, I'm not sure if there is content on the site at this point. I don't know, Jerry, if you want to. Um, address uh, that. Vir virtually nothing in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're going to need uh, in that area is we're going to need the cooperation of people with familiarity in the area to help us develop target bibliographies of public domain material. Okay, uh, and again, that points to the work that lies ahead for the, the steering committee and for uh, 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 staff at CRL and LLMC. At this point, I'd, I'd uh, like to thank you for your, your participation, uh, all of you, uh, in this uh, webinar. Um, thanks for joining us. The um, contact information is here for myself and for Kathleen. I uh, did not put Jerry's uh, information here, but we will uh, convey that to you in the follow-up uh, material um, from the uh, webinar. And um, I'd like to uh, also um, uh, remind you of upcoming webinars uh, from CRL, uh, the semi-annual general webinar on our collections and services coming up soon on October 13th, and the next of our special topic webinars um, by popular demand on medieval resources uh, in early January. And then finally, uh, we do, uh, it's, it's very important to us to get your feedback. So we'd like to encourage you to fill out this online survey. Uh, we will also be sending this information to you, um, to all the registrants. Uh, and note that a recording of the presentation will be posted uh, both at our site and on YouTube. Uh, we now provide recordings on, on YouTube. Um, and uh, please uh, do pass the word along to your colleagues, those who were not able to, to join us today. Uh, you can also um, uh, sign up for uh, more CRL updates uh, on our biweekly uh, online newsletter, uh, CRL Connect. And uh, also please visit us on Facebook now. And we look forward to hearing from you on this topic and others. Thank you so much.